Hey, what is up mortals? It is Jessica Jam here with a new video for you. Welcome to part number 5 of What If Deku Met Ryoko. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. And so, we begin. After a long day of academics, Class 1A got excited for their first day of hero training. Suddenly, the door to the classroom slammed open and All Might entered the room in a dramatic pose. In an enthusiastic voice, the giant man said, I am here, coming into the room like a hero. The kids were all excited to see the number one hero. They had all heard that the man was teaching at UA, but it was still a shock to see him with their own eyes. Midoriya's eyes watered at the sight of his favorite hero. The green teen could not wait to learn from the man that he had idolized since his childhood. Today in class, we will commence your hero training. The blonde man held out a card that read combat. No sense in waiting. Today's exercise will teach you how to handle a head-to-head -head confrontation with villains. All Might then hit a button on the lectern in front of himself. This caused several shelves to emerge from the wall of the classroom. Since you are going to be training like heroes, you should dress the part. After all, looking good is part of the job. All Might paused for effect and then continued. These costumes were designed by professionals based on the forms you turned in with your acceptance paperwork. Get changed and meet me at Ground Beta. Midoriya remembered having to fill out that mountain of paperwork. He also had to change his quirk registration form since he was listed as being quirkless. Midoriya had filled the form out and called his power Lighthawk. As those thoughts swirled around in his mind, the green teen grabbed the case with his seat number and went to get changed. After suiting up, one had gathered at Ground Beta. All of them recognized it as one of the battle stages from the entrance exam. The field was designed like a city. Midoriya still wondered how a high school could afford to build something like that. Welcome, newbies, to Ground Beta. You all look so stylish. Midoriya's costume was a hand-me-down from his grandfather. The boy had been designing his costume when the gray-haired man presented the teen with a case holding an intricately designed battle suit. Midoriya still remembered the conversation he had had with the loving old man. What is this, Grandpa? This is a traditional Jurian combat armor. I like the design, but I don't see how this suit can be called armor. Indeed, it didn't look like armor. The outfit consisted of a shirt, pants, gloves, and boots. The suit was colored navy blue and white. The material felt soft to the touch. Katsuhito smiled at his grandson's confusion. Remember I told you that Jirai was a planet with technology far superior to that of this world? I remember, Grandpa. Well, this suit is an example of that. Plus, this outfit is designed to hold up under the stress of your Jurian powers. This will be important as you get stronger. Plus, this was the gear I wore at my height as a Jorian warrior. It has belonged to our family for generations. This was yours, Grandpa. Are you sure it'll fit me? No need to worry, Izuku. The armor can shift its shape and size to fit its wearer. You will have no problem fitting into this. In that case, I would be happy to wear it as my hero costume. It'll be like you're right there beside me. I always will be, Izuku. Even if death should separate us, I will live on through you. I am proud to see that our family has produced such a fine young man as you. I know you will be a great hero one day. Midoriya's eyes filled with tears. The emotional boy tried to hold it back, but he just couldn't. He burst into tears. Fortunately, Katsuhito remained dry by popping open an umbrella that he had nearby. Back in the present, Midoriya was wearing the battle gear his grandfather had given him. The man was right. The suit fit him like a glove. It even had a holster for Tenchi. The eager boy was interested to see how well the suit held up. This would be the first time he used it in a combat situation. Ryoko walked over and spoke in a friendly manner. You look good, Izuku. The design is a little fancy for my liking, but it suits you. Midoriya looked over to see the former space pirate. She was dressed in a simple one-piece outfit. The gear was tight-fitting, showing off every curve on her body. 
However, the suit covered everything from her neck down. The design was also simple, a black suit with dark red designs covering the arms and chest. Thanks, Ryoko. You look good, too. Thanks, Izuku. You're so sweet. Melissa came over to the pair. The tall girl's costume was apple red with white accents. She was wearing the gloves and boots that she had been wearing during the entrance exam. Midoriya figured these must be support items, she mentioned during her talk with Aizawa-sensei. The suit was completed with a pair of red goggles over her eyes. The intelligent teen figured this was to protect her eyes and allow her to see clearly. Hey, Midoriya and Ryoko. You two look awesome. Uraraka popped up at that moment. Yeah, they do. You look cool too, Melissa. I wish I had been a little more detailed in my description. The skin tight design is really not my style. Ryoko was the one to answer the brunette's comment. Nonsense. You look great, Uraraka. Anyone gives you a hard time, they'll have to answer to me. Thanks, Ryoko. Before the group could discuss matters further, All Might cleared his throat. <clears throat> As I was saying earlier, today you will be taking part in combat training. The bulky hero pulled a folded piece of paper from his pocket. A pair of villains has hidden an explosive device somewhere in a building. It is the job of two heroes to find out where the device is hidden. Disable the villains and take possession of the explosive device. The villains will win if they can disable the heroes or if time runs out. That must be the backstory. Also, he spoke in a confused tone. Sounds like a plot from some old movie. Momo then raised her hand. Sir, wouldn't it be more realistic if we performed the exercise out in the open? Not so, Miss Yaoyorozu. The news often shows heroes and villains battling in the open, but most interactions between heroes and villains happen indoors, in shady back rooms, seedy bars, and abandoned warehouses. Oh, I see. Thank you for explaining that, sir. All Might gave his student a thumbs up. No problem. The number one hero then turned back to face the whole class. Now, I want each of you to take a slip of paper from this box. This will decide your partner for the exercise. All of the students grabbed a slip. Midoriya found out that he would be paired with Melissa Shield. Ryoko found out that she was teamed with Uraraka. All Might then drew lots from a set of boxes. Now to choose how the teams will face off. The Man Mountain pulled two numbers from the boxes. The results showed that Midoriya and Melissa, as the heroes, would face off against Todoroki and Yaorozu, who would be the villains. Both teams entered the Faux City. Todoroki and Momo prepared to defend their bomb. What are you doing, Yaoyorozu? I'm making steel plates to reinforce the door. That's a good idea. Fortify the door after I leave. Wouldn't it be a better strategy for us to remain together? I can end this exercise quickly. So, that's what I'm gonna do. The bichromatic teen walked out of the room, and Momo sealed the door behind him. Outside of the building, Midoriya and Melissa were going over their plan of attack. How should we approach this, Midoriya? The best plan of attack would be for us to keep this fight at close range. After all, your fighting style is short range, and mine would only be mid-range. Really? Even with your telekinesis? That power is really strong, but it only works on things that I can see. I can't move objects that are out of my field of vision. And I would guess that you haven't gotten control of those light wings you used during the entrance exam? I have gotten control enough to use them for defense, like I did in the exam. However, I can only use it for a short period of time. It's just too strong. I am sorry to hear that. Fortunately, I have my full gauntlets on, so I can use up to 30% of my power. Any more than that and I risk breaking them. Then we agree. Melissa nodded her agreement. All Might's voice then came over the earpieces that the students were wearing. Your time starts now, students. Get to it! Midoriya and Melissa entered the building through a window on the ground floor. The two crept down the hallway so as to not alert the villain team of their presence. Suddenly, a wave of ice blasted through the building. It froze the walls, ceilings, and floors at an ungodly speed. Midoriya reacted at the last moment and summoned the Lighthawk Wings and formed a defensive barrier around himself and Melissa. The ice covered the barrier, but the two students remained ice-free, 
Melissa responded to the action with awe in her voice. That was amazing, Midoriya. The green-eyed youth smiled at Melissa. I said I could use the wings for defense, but I didn't think I would have to do it this soon. I'm just glad you did. If that ice had hit us, we would have lost the exercise. The blonde girl paused and thought for a moment. This has to be the work of Todoroki. To think he can make this much ice this quickly. He sure is powerful. Suddenly, Midoriya got a strange feeling in the back of his mind. This feeling told him that someone was coming. The aware teen then saw a figure coming towards the barrier. He knew that it must be Todoroki. Melissa, I'm going to lower the shield on your side. I want you to go back down the hallway and find another way to get to the bomb. I'll take care of Todoroki. Melissa spoke in a worried tone. Are you sure? It is the best option. I can use my wings to defend against his ice. Plus, if we both ran, he would follow us. Even if we found the bomb, we would then have to deal with Yaoyorozu and Todoroki. That is not a chance I want to take. Melissa nodded in agreement. Midoriya lowered her side of the field and she ran off into the ice-covered hallway. Midoriya then lowered his side of the barrier and found himself face to face with the ice user. I'm impressed that you could block my ice. No one's ever done that. But you won't do it again. Todoroki then unleashed a larger wave of ice that engulfed the hallway. Midoriya had only a moment to act. He leapt up onto the top of the wall and his feet stuck there. The ice wave passed harmlessly beneath him. Midoriya then decided to go on the attack before Todoroki used more ice. The hallway was already getting super cold. The determined teen used his telekinesis to grab onto Todoroki and disable his arms. Midoriya then drew Tenchi. He felt his mental connection with the sword turn on, as he ordered the blade to go into stun mode. The blade's blue-green light was dimmed momentarily and then turned a darker shade. The teen then ran along the walls and rushed his opponent. Midoriya landed several hits on the icy boy, causing him to fall to the ground in a heap. The resolute youth then tied up his opponent with the capture tape that All Might had given him before the trial began. As he did, All Might's voice came over the earpiece and said in his enthusiastic tone, And it's over. The winners of the exercise are Midoriya and S.H.I.E.L.D. This surprised Midoriya. He wondered how Melissa had found and defeated Yaoyorozu so quickly. All Might then spoke over the earpieces again. Would all students please make their way back to the observation room for critiques? Honey is a free browser add-on available on Google, Opera, Firefox, Safari, and more. If it's a browser, it has Honey. Honey automatically saves you money when you check out on sites like Amazon, Papa John's, Kohl's. Wherever you shop, it's a good chance that Honey can save you money. All you have to do when you're checking out at these major sites is click that little orange button and it will scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you. It only takes two clicks to install Honey, and now, any time you check out, the Honey button will pop down and show any coupon codes it found. If there's a coupon, they'll find it, and if there's not one, you can rest assured that you're getting the best price possible, and there's no better deal available on that site. If you install Honey right now, you can save a few dollars to hundreds of dollars on your shopping, doing nothing. There's literally no reason not to install Honey. It takes two clicks, 10 million people use it, it has 100,000 five-star reviews, and unless you hate money, you should install Honey. After a few moments, the two teams had gathered in the observation room. It was a long room with a giant computer screen. All four stood before All Might and their classmates. All Might played back the battle recording, and it showed how Midoriya captured Todoroki. The muscular man then showed the other half of the battle. This was the part that the greenette was curious about. The recording showed that Melissa had bolted off down the hallway after she separated from Midoriya. The blonde girl then made her way up the building using the back stairway. Midoriya couldn't help but notice that his teammate was moving incredibly fast. After a few moments, the bright-eyed girl had found Yaoyorozu's hiding place. Melissa tried to enter the room through the door, but Yaoyorozu had already sealed it from the inside with steel beams. Melissa paused for a moment to consider her options. The next thing that the blonde girl did was punch a hole through the wall into the room. The wall collapsed under the force of Melissa's strike. She then entered the room at top speed and attacked her dark-haired opponent. Yaoyorozu used her quirk to create a pair of metal shields to protect herself. 
This did little to protect the creative girl. Melissa attacked Yaruzu with a series of powerful hits. This caused her shields to crumple like aluminum foil. After that, Melissa delivered a powerful chop to the back of Yaruzu's neck. This caused the ponytailed girl to pass out. Melissa then wrapped her opponent in the capture tape and placed her hand on the bomb. The tall man then asked, Can anyone tell me who was the MVP of this battle? Midoriya stepped forward. Sir, the MVP of this battle was Yaoyorozu. All Might placed his hand on his large chin. And why is that, young man? Well, Todoroki's attempt to use his power to disable me and Melissa was a good move. The problem is that he didn't plan for what he would do if his opponents could block his power. This left him in a situation where his power was less effective because of the cramped space of the hallway. Me and Melissa did respond effectively to our opponent's strategy, but we were playing defense the whole time. The only reason Yao Yorozu was defeated was because of Melissa's greater physical strength. Yao Yorozu set up the room to resist the hero's incursion expertly. She is the one who deserves the MVP. All Might nodded his head in approval. You did miss a few points, but all over, a good review of the facts. He then looked at each of the youths in turn. Yao Yorozu, keep in mind that while your quirk is versatile, you need to work on how to deal with opponents with greater physical power than you. Todoroki, always keep your surroundings in mind. Make them work for you, not against you. Melissa, keep in mind that you have great power but part of a hero's job is to limit the damage done to an area. Finally, Midoriya, you showed great promise, but you still have so much room to grow. Keep moving forward and improve your power. All four students thanked their teacher for the kind words. All Might then announced the next pair of teams. Ida and Bakugo would play the heroes, while Ochako and Ryoko would play the villains. Ryoko liked this outcome. This was her chance to discipline Bakugo for his rude comments towards Midoriya. Ryoko and Ochako took a few minutes to set up their hideout. The Man Mountain then called for the exercise to begin. Ryoko closed her eyes and activated her energy sense. This sense allowed her to feel all of the life signatures in a hundred meter radius around her. This ability came in handy when she had raided alien treasures and when she was forced to escape. Right now, she had the exact location of her opponents. Ryoko opened her eyes and looked at her partner with a serious look. Ojako, oh, watch the device. I'm gonna go take care of the other team. Is this a good idea, Ryoko? You saw how that plan worked out for Todoroki. It cost him the match. The difference is, I know where the other team is, and my style of combat can adjust to the environment. So don't worry, we'll finish this quickly. Okay, I'll trust you, Ryoko. Good luck. Ryoko nodded at the pink-cheeked girl and walked out of the room. Ryoko's sense was telling her that Bakugo and Ida were three floors below her. She could feel that they were moving very quickly. The two boys would arrive on the floor in less than three minutes. The space pirate had memorized the layout of the building. In her mind's eye, she plotted the fastest intercept course. The white-haired woman then flew off in that direction. Ryoko found the two boys in a dark hallway. As she was hiding in the shadows, the sneaky woman overheard her opponents in a heated conversation. Bakugo was yelling at the top of his lungs, his voice filled with venom and fire. We should just blitz those two. With your speed and my power, those two extras wouldn't stand a chance. I admire your enthusiasm, Bakugo, but we must not take our opponents for granted. After all, both girls have strong powers, and that girl Ryoko scored very high on the entrance exam and the assessment test. Bakugo's eyes were ablaze with fury. Don't you think I know that, Four Eyes? Let's get moving! Bakugo used his explosions to propel himself forward at a greater speed. Ida went to follow him using his own speed. Ryoko saw this as her moment to strike. She waited for the boys to pass her by. Then she grabbed onto Ida and pulled him into the shadows. Before the boy knew it, he was bound and gagged with capture tape. Bakugo had gotten so consumed with ending the match that he didn't realize his partner wasn't behind him. The next thing he knew, a hand reached out to grab his shoulder. Fortunately, Bakugo's natural combat sense allowed him to dodge the assault. Who's there? Show yourself and fight me! Ryoko replied in a sly voice. If you say so. The powerful girl appeared from the shadows. 
Let's have at it. Ryoko released two energy blasts at Bakugo. The explosive team used his power to dodge and move in closer. Unfortunately, this is what Ryoko wanted. As deadly as she was at a distance, she was more effective at close range. Bakugo went to deliver a powerful explosion to Ryoko's left side. The battle-hardened pirate saw this coming and deflected his attack with her left hand. This caused Bakugo's explosion to hit the wall of the hallway. Bakugo was silently freaking out. No one had ever blocked his attack so easily. He figured that the girl must have gotten lucky. The ashen blonde tried several more attacks, but all his attacks were blocked by Ryoko. The sassy girl then launched several punches and kicks at Bakugo. He dodged some, but many of them hit home. Each blow felt like the boy was getting hit by a truck. This caused Bakugo to retreat back down the hallway. Running away, Bakugo? I thought you were supposed to be the greatest hero that has ever lived. But now you're running away like a coward. Not very heroic. Ryoko's words hit harder than her blows. Bakugo's superiority complex overtook him. The boy raised his gauntleted hands before him. I will show you how strong I am. These gauntlets are more than just a fashion statement. They store up my nitro sweat so I can make bigger explosions. All Might came over Bakugo's earpiece in a frantic voice. Young Bakugo, don't even think about it. An attack like that would put all of you in danger. She'll be fine as long as she dodges. Bakugo then pulled the pin on his gauntlets, releasing a massive explosion. The wave of heat, pressure, and smoke filled the hallway. Ryoko stood her ground as the wave engulfed her. As the smoke and dust from the attack cleared, there was no sign of Ryoko. The only things left were a force field and a hole in the floor. Suddenly, the floor where Bakugo was standing exploded from beneath. This sent the bombastic teen flying into the ceiling. The boy managed to get control of his movement using his explosions. Ryoko flew through the broken floor and continued her assault. While Bakugo had managed pretty well before, now he was off balance. Ryoko launched a merciless barrage against Bakugo. She punched him, kicked him, and threw him into walls like a rag doll. The white-haired girl focused her power into her right hand and delivered a super-powered punch into Bakugo's gut. This knocked all of the air out of him. The fiery boy collapsed on the ground. Ryoko decided not to take any chances as the determined girl used the remainder of the capture tape to disable Bakugo's arms and legs. All Might then called over the mics. The winner of this round is the villain team. Congratulations to young Ryoko and Uraraka. The man paused for a moment before stating, Would everyone who can please make your way to the control room? We will be sending out first aid robots to check everyone out. Ryoko and Uraraka both made their way back to the observation room. Ida and Bakugo also returned after the robots released them from the capture tape. I don't think I need to go over who the MVP of this match was. The number one hero turned to Ryoko and said, Good job, my dear. Even though you were playing a villain, you held yourself with the utmost honor. You will be a great hero one day. All Might then turned towards the other three students. Ida, remember to always be aware of your surroundings while on a mission. If a real villain does take you from behind, they will end you, not just tape you up. Uraraka, you performed well in your role, but don't be afraid to speak up more during the planning stage. You went along with Ryoko's plan a little too quickly. Finally, Bakugo, you fought well, but your actions were appalling. If a real pro acted the way that you did, he would be stripped of his license. Unleashing such a huge explosion endangered you and your classmates. Gain control of that temper. The rest of the teams then underwent the exercise, with each group receiving criticism from All Might and advice on how they could improve. The muscular man then ended the class. Great job today, everyone. You all performed well, and no major injuries. You make this old man proud. Tsuyu Asui then spoke up at this proclamation. Thank you, sir. It is really nice to hear such kind words. Mr. Aizawa was a real buzzkill, ribbit. The other students nodded in agreement. I'm glad that I can bring such overwhelming positivity to my alma mater. Now let me show you kids one more thing the way a hero makes an exit.
Like he has somewhere he has to be. The powerful hero ran off, leaving a trail of dust behind him. Many of the students thought to themselves, I will never be able to run that fast. The students all got changed and headed back to their classroom. They all engaged in some social interaction as the day came to an end. Many of the students praised Midoriya and Ryoko for their great performance. Yaoyorozu even thanked Midoriya for his kind words after the exercise. The humble boy blushed at the attention from the girl. He told her he only spoke the truth. Midoriya then looked around the classroom and noticed that someone was missing. Has anyone seen Melissa? Uraraka spoke up then. I saw her leave the room a little while ago. Said she had to check on something. Maybe I can catch her. I wanted to ask her something. The greenette slid the classroom door open and ran out. Midoriya had a chance to use the trick his grandfather had taught him. The old man had taught Midoriya this ability early in his power training, but the youth hadn't had a good reason to employ it. Midoriya closed his eyes and opened his mind. He suddenly felt all of the life energies around him. It didn't take him long to find Melissa's life signal. Midoriya had noticed that the girl's energy was interesting. It was like it was her own energy, but also something else too. The boy could sense that she was in a teacher's lounge, along with a weakening energy that seemed familiar somehow. The boy took off towards the signal. After a moment, Midoriya reached the room. He was about to knock on the door when he heard voices within. Are you okay, Uncle Might? I'm fine, Melissa. And please call me Mr. Yagi in this form. Okay, but you look more exhausted than usual. It would seem that my time as the symbol of peace will come to an end sooner than I thought. My muscle form barely lasts me an hour now. I was barely able to get through all of that class. Is this because you transferred one for all to me? It was at this point that Midoriya felt like an eavesdropper, but all of the things he had heard swam through his head, making him feel dizzy. This caused the confused boy to lose his balance and fall through the sliding door. Midoriya regained his equilibrium and raised his head. He saw Melissa sitting in a chair. Across from her was a skeletal man in a yellow suit. Midoriya, what are you doing here? Oh, well, you see. The boy had no idea how to answer that question. How much of our conversation did you overhear, young man? Midoriya gave the only answer he could. Most of it. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you've enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects that our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so farewell and have a divine day.